we do it. We do it a little. Uh, we switch our order. So now we start. Mm -hmm. Start up. Then we go to that. Make it be. I want to watch. I want to watch. Okay. All right. Good Shabbat Shalom. Shalom. Good night, Shabbat. So there's a. There's a guy who was a right. Who was a famous guy last week. We spoke about a passed away in Israel. Um, Uri Zohar, right? This was another famous guy that passed away in Israel. His name was A. B. Yehoshua. That's the name he went by. That was his. Oh, the A. B. Yehoshua. How old was he? I'm not sure. I did check out his wiki today, but it's one. Poet, film writer. Now, let me, let me back up. There's a guy who works in an aerospace company in Israel. His name is Michal Alush. He's a Chabad, he's a little larger guy. And he works in aerospace. And he was flying to France. To give a to give some type of a lecture, show, presenting, and uh, on the plane he sat down, fine for Davini, put on his talents and his twillin, and uh, you put on twillin today. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, you got it. Twillin right? Yeah, you got it twillin today, right? Just right. twillin today, right? Yeah. Gotta help you out. What do you want to know? Michael, I'm um, activated? No, so Michael and Joseph. Um, in any case, so he started putting on, he, filed, he started putting on a palace and filling on the plane, and um, and he started dominating. Well, they came to him and let him know that they have an upgrade for him. The first class, business class, first class, whatever. He goes to business, the first class, whatever it was. And the guy who's sitting next to him, the guy who they're sitting, who they're sitting him next to, they um, they ask, uh, the guy tells him, he said that, ah, and show one thing, the Davin and show one thing, but over here on the plane, we're tiles and filling on the plane. So he said, well, Hashem is in Shul. Hashem is also on the plane. <laughs> Why not? So, they began a Yudavid and they began an interesting conversation. And he asked him, Alush asked A.B. Yoshua if he wants to put on the filling. And he said that, um, he said, no, I'm an atheist. So he said, listen, an atheist is also a good level because some people, they're just agnostic, they don't care. An atheist that bothers them, what do you mean, why does it bother them? They would even go, why does it bother an atheist? I'm an atheist with a whole passion. It's already a level of belief in Hashem. So he tells them that they didn't want to find phone. He says, no, I don't believe, I don't believe. And it turns out this Alush, his cousin, in this case, Alush, they, they were talking over there. And Alush, see, besides for being an aerospace engineer, he's also a translator for um, Adin Evan Yitzhak Steins out his books. It turns out that this guy, Alush's cousin, also the same name, Alush, Jean, Jean something Alush, he's a translator for this guy who he's sitting next to, for this A.B. Yeshua, he translated his book. So it turned out that an interesting conversation. He didn't put a phone with that, but that was that. He comes to France, and he, uh, he, he, uh, 
he does his show, and he's supposed to give uh, a lecture. I forget which university is supposed to give a lecture. And they um, they call him up, and they ask him, he shouldn't wear his religious garb to the lecture. Meaning, his yarmulke. He said, don't wear your yarmulke to the lecture. So what are you talking about? And, he, and he, he, when he gets this message, he forwards it to his cousin, who he was staying by. And he tells him, now, it turns out that his cousin was meeting with this um, with this uh, Eli Yeshua, the, the guy who was an atheist, and he tells him, he shows him the text that this guy, uh, they don't want to wear his yarmulke as a, as a lecture. So, Abi Yeshua tells him, tell, to tell uh, your cousin that he better wear, he shouldn't give in, and he better wear his yarmulke there. This is the atheist. This one's there, but non-conformance. Non-conformance, exactly. Yeah, no-conformance. It's good. This, this week's Pasha, we have three main characters in the Pasha. You have, which were the three leaders that we had in the desert. They are Moshe, 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 Rabbein and Moses. Aaron, his brother Aaron, and his sister, their sister, Miriam. The Torah tells us regarding Aaron that he was supposed to light the menorah. Right? At the beginning of the Pasha, about let's the narrative would light the menorah. And it says there that Rashi says that Moshe felt bad. Last week's Pasha, when the Nassim, when the leaders were bringing, bringing each one a, what, their, uh, their day they had, they were bringing their carbon. So it says that Aaron felt bad, and he complained to Hashem. He says, why can't I bring? Because it was all the tribe besides for the Khan and besides for, the, besides for Aaron. So he says, Aaron says, why, don't, why can't we do that? Hashem told Aaron, don't worry. You're, you're doing something better. You're lying in the menorah. Don't. So the Rebbe asks, why would Aaron want something? Well, he has his thing. He's a Kayan. Why would he even ask for something like that? And the Rebbe says that when a Yid sees a, another Yid has the opportunity to do a mitzvah, it should bother him that he should want to do the mitzvah. He should want, he should always want to grab opportunity to do a mitzvah, and if we can't, it bothers us. And that was our right. Huh? Bog- huh? Whether you can do it or not, another story. But it should bother you that you should want to do a mitzvah. Then you had an episode of Maisha in this week's Parsha, where the Yidden come to him and they say, We want butter, we want meat, where's the beef? Remember, huh? We are, as they said, they remember the, the watermelon we had in Egypt. We miss it. And Moshe said, I can't, enough. I can't deal with this anymore. Look at this week. Said, I can't deal with it anymore. I said, Shep, Shep, kill me. I can't. Where'd you put me with these people? What are you, are you, like, this is what they want. Rashi says, no, 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 no. Don't beat it that way. It's not way Moshe, it's not what's bothering Moshe. Because Hashem said that those that wanted the meat, the mud wasn't good enough for them. I'm going to give it to them and watch what's going to happen to them. They're not going to have a good end. So Moshe was bothered by that. He's bothered by the fact, not by the fact that they were asking for meat. It's a big deal, Hashem, to make a delivery, a best value delivery of, uh, of steak in the, in the desert. It's very difficult. You do it with everything the best. That's not a problem. Ribs. What Moshe was bothered by was the response of Hashem. And he said, Hashem, if you're gonna, this is what you're gonna do to them for a little piece of meat, kill me. I don't want 
I don't want this. He was bothered. Moshe was bothered by the fact that the Yidim were going to get such a punishment. And then he had the story of Miriam. Miriam. This week's parsha, she um, she hears Eldad and Medad saying the was saying prophecy, and and she tells Aaron. She was like, woke us to them. They're, saying, they're becoming prophets. You know what happened to Moshe when he became a prophet? Her brother. He separated from Sitar. He separated from my Sitar. And Rashi tells us that Aaron was bothered. He was, she was, he was, she was, sorry, that that Miriam was bothered for her sister-in-law. Why can't my sister-in-law have a normal life being with her husband? I don't want... Okay. But I want... She says, I feel bad. I want... She was punished for it. Right? She was punished for it. But forget about the punishment. There was something positive about that. About the fact that she wanted, she cared about her sister. And the Rebbe said that all these three episodes in the parsha are giving one specific, very special message, an important message. And that is that a yid has to care. We have to care. If someone has an opportunity to do a mitzvah, we should care. We should want to also do a mitzvah. If we see someone that is having that is not able to have a proper relationship, it should bother us. We should want them to have a proper relationship. And if we see someone that's going to get punished for a piece of meat, it should bother us. It should be, we should have that atheist, atheistic bother that and and the Rebbe says that that bother that we have, that we're bothered by things that matter, which is going to bring about Shia's coming. Because it's through being bothered that Shia's not here. And you need to do something about it. That's going to make them, that's going to not just pave the way for Shia, but it's actually going to make the Shia for the house. Almost Shabbos? So, Shabbos. Right.